How's it going everybody? This is John. A couple of years ago I started a project on this property concerning the Castanea dentata, the American chestnut tree, in hopes of bringing back part of them like an anchor to this part of the property. Started off with marginal success because of the uh, smaller trees that I had planted and the harsh weather, deep snow that we get up here, the weight of that was breaking the branches until I thought of a different solution for those trees. I picked up these trees from two different sources. One is the commonly known one from Chestnut Hill Farms, sometimes you can get them at Walmart, and a different nursery. I plan to pick up about a dozen or so from a different nursery altogether that has some successful hybrids. All right, here's one of the Dunstans I had picked up from a different nursery in a five gallon planter. And to demonstrate some success after a few years growth, for the first time, we have burrs. There it is. A pair of them. Pretty cool. I am also looking forward to snagging these when they get ready to harvest or fall before some critter does in hopes to start learning about planting them from seed. Oh, about 15 yards from that tree is one of the original Dunstans I had planted. It has since grown back from shoot growth and I was able to get a wrap around it for some protection. All right, here's another one of the five gallon planter Dunstan chestnut trees. It's a pretty healthy tree. It had a handful of the pollen flowers on it this year. I believe they're called catkins. It's about 30 yards from the tree with the burrs on it and about 15 yards or so away from two pin oak trees that I had planted in the same area, knowing full well that the oak trees can harbor the chestnut tree blight. Okay, here is another of the Dunstan chestnuts from a five gallon planter. Fairly healthy tree. It also had a handful of the catkins on it this year. And once again, in close proximity is one of the original Dunstans I had planted. It's grown back from shoot growth. It's a little bushy. I'm going to have to figure out another plan using perhaps straw or hay to protect it this year from snowfall. Food plot tree stand view. Behind us we have a pair of Dunstan chestnut trees. We have the winter rye food plot, one of them. In front we have what's left over of a clover chick remix. That's got to get turned in the spring. Off in the distance, it's hard to pick up with this camera, but there's an old logging trail I worked into a soybean mix food plot, some brassicas over there. Up ahead, 35, 40 yards, there's a few smaller apple trees, plus the other two Dunstan chestnut trees. Off to the right, we have another old logging trail that I worked and turned into yet another winter rye plot. And over there ahead, we have the other Dunstan chestnut tree. We're in close proximity to the pin oak trees are. All right, that's part of the beans and mix plot. We'll have to see what this camera might be hiding. Of course for food plot trees you shouldn't rely on one species alone. Here you can see some of the deer have munched the leaves off of some of the apple trees that I planted. They should grow back. All 
where and when you can try to get a protective wrap around your fruit trees give them a fighting chance to come back aerial view of one of the trees apple trees next to one of the food plots that's a good fall mix all right, here we have an area where I have planted three of the original Dunstan chestnut trees a few years back. Now they've recovered from shoot growth. They seem healthy. Uh, it's on an area near a hillside near a swamp. So I came up with the idea of using the blocks of the hay bales just before winter hits and build like a shelter around them. That should offer them some protection from the weight of the snow so they can continue growing next year. Hopefully that will be successful. A note I'd like to add about uh, these trees in the northern zone, this is area 4B for growing. It can be a little harsh on any kind of a fruit bearing or nut bearing tree. So what helps is getting them in an area where there's ample sunlight. Sometimes even if that means opening up the canopy a little bit. Well anything you could really do to improve your hunting grounds certainly helps out with the wildlife and your chances of success. But I picked the American chestnut tree along with a few other projects because, well, it's, it is a project of mine, and you consider it once that it was a huge staple in the ecology supporting wildlife that was removed by the blight. And since the late 40s, if you consider all of the deforestation and urban sprawl, we've re reduced a lot of the range in certain states and certain areas of the state that wildlife can thrive. Bringing back part of that staple makes a lot of sense and that's one of the reasons I'm continuing the work. Thanks for watching.